Let's do a little quick start guide for Voice Support 2. I'm going to run you through just the very basics of how to get started and some of the things you might see when you first start the program up. Uh, just a little caveat here, if you're on a Mac, you're best to connect the device that you want to uh, be using within Voice Support 2 before opening the program. Uh, for some reason it's just an idiosyncrasy of the way that Macs lock out their MIDI devices, but on a PC you can do it either way. So I've got a PC, I'm going to connect my device um, after I've loaded the program here because I wanted to show you a couple of things ahead of time. So on our screen here, we have two different tabs, the Devices tab and the Presets tab. Now I don't have any devices connected, this MIDI devices area here is empty, so I can't click Presets because there's no device to look at the presets for. But down at the bottom here, I can see that I have a whole bunch of devices that I own that are not connected right now. And you can see that this Play Acoustic has this little icon here, and that means that there's a Play Acoustic firmware update available that I have not yet put on my unit. So this is a really good way, if you had a couple of different devices, to make sure that your devices are up to date. Obviously, you probably won't see this many unless you're a fervent TC Helicon fan, but of course, me being in the development office, I do have more devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that Play Acoustic, the one that says it needs a firmware update. I'm just going to connect it by a USB. It says USB device change, so I'm going to say scan now, which is what it wants me to do. I go scan now, and it's now looking for the unit, and it's found it, and it's now at the bottom here automatically syncing the presets, so it's going to make that presets tab available. It's basically grabbing a copy of your presets uh, from your Play Acoustic. I'm going to click the update button here, and it says firmware update, are you sure you want to update? Yes, you do. Um, you can show details if you want. If you show details, it actually tells you what's going to happen within that update and what you're going to get. Uh, of course, in the case of Play Acoustic, we've added per preset guitar effects and uh, the ability to have delay on there. Um, so I'm going to start this update. You'll see it says once you've started, don't do anything, don't turn it off, uh, obviously the usual caveats. So start the update. What it's doing right now is it's analyzing the presets and it's going to convert them from the previous version of firmware to the new version of firmware. So right now my unit is flashing, it's sending the update to the Play Acoustic. The overall progress down here that you see is kind of a, an estimated timer, uh, so that'll keep ticking along as the process completes. As a part of this process, if we've added any features to the product, in the past there was a risk of the setup data being uh, lost or presets being manipulated, and a big part of what Voice Support 2 offers you now is that it's actually doing this preset upgrade for you in the background. So it's waiting for the, the unit right now to finish its update, and then it's going to reconnect to the unit, and you'll see that it actually converts the presets and sends them over to the unit. So we're just going to wait for another oh, 20 seconds or so here. I know it's a bit of a slow process to do in real time, but that's the breaks when we're trying to record this live here. So we'll just hang on, talk amongst yourselves. Just about there. Alright. I noticed that my unit is restarted, so it's just finishing the last of the data here. There we go, it's rescanning. And it's going to update the setup, and there you go. Play Acoustic updated successfully, and you'll notice now that it's going to rescan and when it comes back, I'm just going to click that, sorry. Um, I had some backups that were in there from before, and uh, I just told it to convert them. I know I did that pretty quickly, but we're not going to talk about that particular function right now. So now you can see Play Acoustic is here, and it doesn't have the little icon here that shows you that there's an update available. So what I can do is I can click on the Presets tab, and this is where we manage the presets. So you'll be greeted with something like this. All of these presets right here, are showing as factory presets. These little TC Helicon uh, logos in the bottom show that it's a factory preset. If this was your device and you had a bunch of your own presets on it, for example, if you had renamed something, you know, Mike's Harmony, and that was on your unit, you would actually see it like this. So these little um, user icons show you that it's a user preset. So when you're looking at the unit, and uh, what's on it right here. You can manipulate any of the presets, move them around um, by copying and pasting. So I can move Mike's Harmony over, I can, uh, I can uh, swap them so I can take the first preset and the third preset here and I can swap the two positions of them. And you'll see as I'm moving things around and they're changing location or name, they get this little pencil and that essentially says these presets have been edited within voice support but they have not been sent to the unit yet. I need to hit apply changes in order to send those presets to the unit. So that's just a little thing. If you see that pencil you know that you're kind of out of sync between what's on the program and what's on your unit. Something I recommend very first off that you do when you come into the program for the first time is hit backup all. What that's going to do is it's going to create 
you're going to create a backup. The backup is going to show the date and the time, and it'll say all because you did a backup all. When I click on it, you'll see that those three presets that I had in the unit and all the other factory presets are all backed up here. This backup also includes your setup data, so if your unit was set in a particular way, uh, you can then restore that, that particular setup later on if you'd like to. The cloud preset area over here is where our online presets are. So you can see the various packs that we have available, and I can you know, grab a few of these uh, presets here by say click and then shift click. I like these four presets. I'll go over to the um, play acoustic here, kind of drag through the play acoustic, and then over to the working data area here, and I could say, OK, paste those four presets there. Great, I've got those four presets. I see that they've been changed, edited, but they haven't been synced, so I'll hit apply changes. There we go. I've got those presets there for me. Um, now, what I can say here is, oh, I like these seven presets. I want to just keep a backup of only these presets. Well, I can just say backup user. And now you'll see that there's a new archive that's been created, new backup, just has the user presets in there. All the others are empty. Really great way of just grabbing your presets. Now, if you're doing uh, some work on the program here and you'd like to see a whole lot more of the preset space, this view here uh, can be changed to a more sort of grid view. So if you were dealing with something like the 500 preset mega pack we have here that has tons of presets, it's a little bit easier to see all of the presets. Rather than seeing it in this view, you can toggle the view there. So I could grab a whole bunch of these if I wanted to and take them over to my play acoustic and I could find a place to drop them, say paste, there they are. Oh, they're all yellow as well, so the color coding still makes sense. If I toggle that view, you'll see that down here I have a bunch of these edited presets. So there they are, and I hit apply changes and it's going to go through the process of sending all of these presets over to the unit. And I can again, because these are being treated as user presets, because they're new, they're not the factory presets, I can again, after I've made this change, I can do another backup user, and I'll have a user bank that has these particular presets in it. So if we get a sec for this to complete, you'll see how that happens. There we go. So I can say backup user again. Now when I go to the second user backup, you'll see that those first presets plus all of these ones and their locations are all stored in that backup so you could easily restore them to the unit. Now there's a whole bunch of other things you can do within these menus. There's all these right click options so if you right click anywhere you'll get all of these different things that you can do. You can, you can even do things like changing the button size if you want to and all that kind of stuff if you want to uh, change the way things look. Um, but those are a bit more advanced and we'll probably cover those later on. Uh, something you might want to see right away would be the undo and redo functions. Uh, even covers things like creating the backup. So you can see that this backup I created over here, I can actually make it go away and bring it back with undo and redo. So it's, it's pretty uh, good at taking all of those um, things and, and uh, doing all the processes that you would need to to actually restore and get things back. So you, you have a fair number of undos. I can go back pretty far here to where we began. Um, and this is where we first made those changes to, to the unit before I applied the changes. Apply changes is something that, um, that will be a stop point for the undo because it can't uh, perform that action on the box. You also have import and export for presets and um, other ways you can back up and all that kind of stuff, but that's something we can go into later. Hopefully this gives you a little overview of how you can get access to the presets and how you can update your unit, and we'll talk to you soon.